Hey guys, M12 Warthog here, back with another strategy guide, and now I did play Risk Actions, and I did do pretty much, I played through a scenario and showed you how I would carry out a strategic battle, strategic warfare, on all of the custom maps which I unlocked by playing all the campaign, which I did, but I never looked at quite as in the situation of what, of what others would do more so than what they would do as a reaction to what I'm doing, because that's what concerned me is about getting the victory. So, I'm going to do a little map analysis of the starting map for all five of these levels. Starting out with All Quiet on the Human Front, and then going from there, determining... Which has the best starting points, figuring out what the best moves would be for each faction, not just my own, one I'm playing as, and so forth. So, I'm probably going to do one per video, so let's see how well we do. Alright, I'm just going to skip the cutscene, and get into this. All right. Yes. Okay. Now, objectives are going to be important. Control outpost. Guaranteed car. Control garrison. Song maneuver. Control four barracks. Complete two continents. Attack thy. Two additional troops. Take over seven territories in one turn. All right. So... I'm first, and <clears throat> from the start, I already see some good options here. One, I don't want to lose my capital, as that is a victory requirement, as this is different than all my other ones on the custom maps, because of this, you have to complete any three objectives, and this is the key component here. Complete any three objectives. And still hold your capital for a victory. So, yes, you could wipe out all of their territories. And you'd still have an advantage and win that way. But you don't have to. So, right here, we have three out of five territories for headquarters. We have three out of four for Warpaw. Three out of five for Blackfort. And our opponents have... Four out of five for Garrison, and Garrison was to get the guaranteed card. Now, that is one of my favorite ones because you can not only get a card, but you can also select other objective rewards at the same time. So, what I feel like I could do if I was blue is attack their last territory in Garrison, go for that. I would attack right on their uh, War Paw. Preventing them from, uh, preventing them from going and getting the full continent a bonus objective. Although you start out with that territory being your high, your highest, your most highest populated territory. One of your, I think second highest actually, your highest ones in Garrison. And the main reason why I'd go for Garrison as the enemy, as in the blue side here, is that we zoom in here. You can see that they have three and four. So I could send the four down here. I can maneuver them here. And then maneuver this three here. Because once you have full control of garrison, you only need to protect these two territories. It's just that the capital here is attackable from two different areas. But it doesn't matter. As long as the brunt of your force is there, it can be defended. It's not... It's still attacking your territory. It can't maneuver around the armies and still go into that territory. If you go into a territory, you're going to have to attack it. Now, another thing is that once we get this, I feel like I'd expand directly once we take out Garrison, like I said, into Warpaw here. Finish this off. Then we have two full continents, which is an objective... And we get an attack die. Now, assuming at this point we already have guaranteed card, 
I like to go over and see if we could take seven territories in one turn or do any of the other ones. Just control four barracks. Now, if I have control of these two continents, I have control of one barrack. In the beginning, there are four and we I have two and they have two. Well, well, and so forth. So, my enemy would probably want to attack headquarters because that's where your capital is, preventing you from getting from from uh, getting a mission objective to win as you need at least take out your entire enemy, which would include you having your own capital or going for the three objectives and maintain your capital. But as long as you have your cap, as long as you have your opponent's capital, they cannot get a war room victory. They have to get domination victory and take out everyone, which ultimately will involve taking your capital. So if they have three objectives, then you don't want them to get their capital. And if they do, well, then they won the game. So I've already determined that it's probably going to be hard to defend these three one territories here. But, you know, because they have more troops here. And it's going to be harder to get here because this territory here, Rottendale, is the, is the one territory you need to defend. Like Garrison over here, you only need to defend two to protect it. Not all five territories. For Rottendale, Rottendale protects... All of Black Fort, provided that you have all the territories. Now, assuming that this goes to plan, and we do get a few good die rolls, and we get Warpaw, and we make a few maneuvers, and we get their capital, and we already have our, by this point, we would have three continents, we're getting continent bonus, we could probably get enough trips to the advantage of taking territory from my opponent, but at the same time allowing myself actually get objectives once we start to move and take out everything from everything else from from outposts and so forth. Now that's what I would do if I was blue, which is my enemy. Now if I was green, M12, LRV, or RVSB, or whatever your gamer tag is, well that's a different story. For here, I'd probably double down on the troops that go into this place here, move the troops from my capital to here, because your capital is not a border, you do not need to defend your capital, because it does not border anyone and cannot be attacked until it takes out some of your troops. Although if it goes through your well-armed borders, it's probably not going to have enough troops to attack it unless they have a huge lead. At that point, you're screwed. So, I go here. You know, try and get the rest of this continent, get the full continent here. Like I said, I have three out of four here earlier. They might go early on to stop that, but you could also try and see if you can contest that as well. And you can definitely contest, not even contest, just take full control of Black Fort. Take out those three one populated territories. Because I could go two. Onto one here, uh, which is actually one on one, because you have to leave one troop behind to occupy it, and so forth. So this three on one would be the only one here. But I feel like if we put a lot of troops here, and we can do this once we secure our capital over here in headquarters, we could do this very easily because it's going to take them a few turns to get through all of these territories here, and then we can set up a defense on Rottendale, which is what we're going to do. And like I said before. Your control of Rondale is going to be very hard to capture because you because you start with half half of the territories there, but we have the key Rottendale one and the other territories that border Rottendale that's not in Black Fort, which is also key, but we have a higher population as a whole as we have a total of I think that's seven troops to your three. So we outnumber you a little bit more than 2 to 1 there. So that's our odds, seeing as we own every territory but 3. And outposts. We could easily get that 
done. But the main objective here is that it's going to take a whole lot longer if you want to. Especially seeing as you have three borders you'd have to defend. You'd have to defend this, unless you have full control of uh, headquarters, and this territory is not owned by the enemy. You have this one down here by garrison, which they're more than likely going to take, because they can just take this out, get, get a first objective right off the bat, and do so as well. And not only that, but I feel like if we were to go for any objectives... Objective-wise, we own... Both teams start out with two barracks, like I said before. Both teams start out with territories that border those barracks. So from the first turn, I could put troops here, attack that, and put troops here and attack that. So turn one, I can instantly claim that. That's, even if I lose those barracks, I still claimed the objective reward, and that counts as me getting it. And I'm up one objective, and I still have my capital, and I just need two more to win. So, knowing that that's the case, you have a pretty good even matchup here. But the fact that, um, the fact is, is that, um, if you can attack early on, in, in the right places, and it's really down to die roll, and get a few good first turns, I think you'll be set for the rest of the match, and it'll be pretty good for you, and so forth. So, now that we're done with this, I'm actually going to exit this game. I don't know why it's saving. Campaign. A bridge to for... Cats versus humans. Let's start this one up. All right. Okay. Objectives for this mission. Control an enemy capital. Control three connected cities. You get an airfield. Fence die for completing two continents. Mine 10 minerals. Take over seven territories in one turn. <clears throat> Alright. So, if we know that we have control of half the dam, and we get full control, we can pretty much prevent people from getting objectives. Now, at the same time, when you're playing this War Room-style objective match, a first one to get three objectives and still hold your capital, still holds true here. But I like to point out that we start with half of the dam under our control. As long as we have half, we are good because that means it's going to be harder for people to come into Kotada. I don't know what you want to call that. I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. <clears throat> anyway, it's this continent here, and I feel like that's going to be hard to conquer because if you have a huge army here, what I would like to do is go down here, then go here, then here, then here, and then here. You don't want to end with your large army on this continent, your largest army, if they have control of both sides of the dam because that thing's gone. They can wipe it out. Everything but one, tr one army per territory will remain. Now, as for getting... As for getting the first one to get to get complete two continents, Warpaw is sort of a toss-up, really, but uh, humans have more territories there. You have Simos, I think is how you pronounce it, and Next Gen Bay are the more likely ones for the cats. Now, the reason... I say this is because you have the, the thing here though is that once you have control of Korat you have control of ocean travel half of the ocean travel now the reason for this is that there's three paths you can travel to here to here to here to here and from there down to here so 
There are three places, four places you can travel over across this lake, ocean, whatever you want to call it here, but they all have to stop. But if you want to go to one point, you have you can go to this point on the map through across this ocean lake thing here, but you have to stop here if you want to go to any other place other than this one. So if I want to go here, I'm going to have to stop here first unless I'm already here, so forth. So just by holding this down, you are limiting your opponent's capabilities to naval travel as well as keeping that as the border between you controlling next-gen bay and your enemies getting it. Because you don't need to defend all five territories because they're not going to get attacked. They can't attack it. They can only attack one, and that is Korat. If you defend that, then you are, should be good and solid to go on that defensive area. Which is also why when they... When the humans start out with it, they have the advantage there. But this is an advantage that you probably want to rush early on and get it before it becomes into a bloodbath for control of it. You can get it early on, and this will be on their first few turns where they're like, Okay, I have three armies. I could put them down there and try and see if I can take it away from their six armies. Because maybe if you get that good of a lead or that good of a few... um die rolls because this is risk that might be good for you but at the same time you could also go here attack this with all your troops here because you start with one more troop than they have here just take this out and you don't need to worry about it being attacked from here because you could just rearm this as a border if you want and then go from here and take control of this and defend this. Now, the reason why I also think that this would be a next thing to do in Kotada, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, is because you get access to Silverstris, whatever that is, and Warpaw. Because you can attack this territory here. When you have a border next to your opponent's capital, that means you have the risk at any point from preventing them from getting victory. Strategic war room victory compared to domination, which does require strategy, but if you're going for that, you can take them all out. You're eventually going to take out all the territories. It's just that you just got to make sure they don't get three objectives and hold their capital before then. And so forth. Now, if I were humans... I feel like, given the numbers advantage, I'd go for Silver Stress, try and get get the next three territories, the last three territories on Next Gen Bay, try and go for that route, or, um, for, uh, getting the two, completing two continent objective bonus, and getting the defense die, but I feel like whoever gets the defense die first can lay back and just put troops on their borders, and then when they attack, they'll lose more troops attacking you because you have a better chance to roll. You have an extra chance to roll a higher number when defending, which is good. And then you will have, like, maybe less troops on their borders because they lost a lot of them attacking you. Then you can place on your drafting phase all of your troops and then take over one territory at a time and get the slow, the slow snowball into completely taking them out. Which I feel like is going to be a key factor here as well. Now, another thing, though, is that once you take out Silverstress and all the remaining territories in Orbach, you greatly reduce the number of borders you have. One, you only need to uh, arm this border here, this border here, and this border here. And if you haven't lost any of these territories in Kutada due to, due to um, them attacking you, which is good. Now, on the other hand, when you do stick out this territory or go for Kutada, you definitely want to take it out if you're going to go for it early on. Probably not for the objective bonus of getting uh, mining mineral resources, because that's going to be hard, given the situation that I could just go for. 
from right here down to here and get full control of the dam, pretty much making it impossible for you to even mine as mining is done right before the drafting phase. So you can't put like 10 additional troops to your one on there and go, okay, I get my 10 minerals for this turn. It happens before that, so you can't really do that. And as long as you have that there, you can do that. And then maybe put maybe two or three there, and maybe each drafting phase add one more. So maybe in like three to four turns, you'll have more than enough to actually get that objective, which I feel like is something that both these sides could do at the same time. Now, also I want to point out here is map-wise, I feel like the, the highest, the best, uh, the easiest uh, capital to defend, we go to the cats. Humans are second, obviously. Um, most likely to get, most likely to complete two continents first. Uh, I go with cats again, but uh, if uh, positioning wise, in the amount of the troops that they have bordering the other enemy troops in the in the best of uh, most likely uh, continents to take over if you want to rush the objective. If we're talking about numbers here rather than the amount of territories in positioning, if you want to talk about manpower, the humans have it in that area, so maybe they won't need to put down as much and then they can spend that on defending the borders which you want would want to take from them to get to get it, to get the two confident rush for that bonus objective of getting a defense die. Now ten minerals you get an attack die. Now take over seven ter territories in one turn. This could be kinda of hard to do with only two people unless you snowball. Get a lot of territories, all but like a lot of them, and make use of all the continent bonuses to get extra troops for a turn. Next Shin Bay gets you three. Warpaw gets you three. And then Kutata gets you three, which 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 is a good one to hold on to, but it's not gonna do you much if you can't defend it, and that's gonna be kind of hard. If Simmons and Silver Strips are all taken over by your opponents, because if they have that, they can just flood this, making it almost impossible for you to set up a defense every single turn, and they can just go in there and take out what they want, and so forth. So, with, all, with that done, those are my map analysis for the first two campaign levels from the point of view of the player, of what you would, from the fashion that you play as, versus your opponent and what they could have done the best, whether or not they actually follow through with this is probably something that you need to be aware of. Maybe they won't follow this down to the book, down to the exact, right by the book, by a preset plan every single time. So you might want to take a look and pay attention to what your opponent's doing, but this should show you what the best options for your opponent, and if you can counter them, you pretty much have it in the bag. Now, now a lot of these, are, now a lot of these uh, maps and stuff that I've done, I've learned a lot about. If someone asks me why, why I uh, do the strategy guide stuff, and it sort of ties into risk factions because it actually started in risk factions, that I quickly want to go over as well. Because I don't want these days to go on for too long, so I'm actually going to uh, make it so that um, I only do two maps from one. But this actually started when I realized how much time I've actually spent playing this. Most of you don't know, but this is the first game I bought on Xbox Live, not including the four games that came with it, which were Halo, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, I think. I think it was Tomb Raider or something like that. It was a Tomb Raider game for the Xbox 360. Um, I still have the other one, I think. Um, Batman Arkham City. Then I have, uh, then I have Darksiders 2. Two of them were on discs. And I think Halo 4, um, two of those were on discs. The other two were downloadable once I got the keys with the package. But, but I didn't buy them because it came with the thing. And with the Xbox, and then I bought one. Then I bought a game, and I went with this one first because we played the demo and so forth. So, yeah, I, fun fact, I, I'm undefeated. Uh, well, that's, I don't want to brag about it, but um, I have a lot of experience. 
life of this, and it made me wonder, I could do this for other games, because when I play games like this, I 